Okay, so if you're going to open up graphical analysis, obviously my desktop looks a li little bit different than the way your desktop would look if you're using a computer here at school. I do want to let you know um, if you want graphical analysis, I actually, on today's announcement page for Blackboard, there's a link to the installation file. If you click on this, this will take you um, to a list here. And this is this installation file. It's 57 megabytes. It's not huge. Um, but you double click on it, you download it, and then you have to go through the run and install stuff. It only works for PCs, not Mac computers, sorry, all right? And it's an older version of graphical analysis, but it does work in case you want it, in case you want to you know, make some graphs at home in your spare free time. Everybody wants to do that. So this is graphical analysis here. You're going to go ahead and double click on it. When the first time you log in and open it up, you're going to see you know, installation. It's going to go through some installation uh, processes. Let it do that. All right, when I use graphical analysis, the bottom line is if I want to change something about the graph, I double click on where I want to change it. That's sort of a general rule. What I'm going to do, the first thing that I'm going to do for a graph is make a title. So I'm going to click on the graph, and what comes up is this graph options window. You can also graph, uh, get to this graph options window through the options uh, menu option at the top of the window. All right? A good title of a graph describes what the graph is, and it relates your axis labels. Now, what this is going to be is the volume of accumulated filtrate over time, right? Now, accumulated means it's accumulating, stacking up, collecting more and more. Applesauce filtrate, filtrate is material that goes through a filter. So this relates what the y-axis will be. This is going to be volume. And the x-axis, all right? General good descriptive title is y-axis related to x-axis. Well, what I'm going to do is label those axes. And I'm going to do it up here by double clicking on the x here. What should my x-axis be here? It should be time. I'm going to do a short name. And what are my units? Uh, let's looks, looks like this group used. Are these seconds, guys? Mm -hmm. yeah. OK, so I'll just put an SEC, which is an abbreviation for seconds. I'm going to double click on y, get my column options window for y. This is going to be filtrate volume. My short name would just be volume. What were the units on the graduated cylinders that you used? So that's lowercase m and then capital L, milliliters. I'm going to hit done. And look what happens. It populates up here, and it populates on the graph correspondingly. And so what I'm going to do is just start typing in numbers that these guys have. So 0, 0. At time 0, you had 0 milliliters. That makes sense. That's what everybody should have. After 20 seconds, you still had zero milliliters. After 40 seconds, you had 0 0.75 milliliters. Well, that's a pretty precise estimate. After 40 seconds, you had one milliliter. Oh, uh, what did I do? I'll go back to 60 here. 80 seconds, we had 1.2 milliliters. And I can keep going, but I'm not going to. I'll do one more here. 100 seconds, 1.5 milliliters. Now, what you don't want to do is something like, um, you see how 80 seconds is the same thing as 1 minute 20 seconds? If you put in a colon here, the computer doesn't know what to do with punctuation. So it, it does, that data point just goes away. The computer doesn't recognize what that means. So you have to put in a raw number, all right? Um, if you put in units like this with the letters, again, the computer doesn't know what to do with these letters. It doesn't know what to do with punctuation. It doesn't know, know what to do with letters. So just put in the raw numbers, OK? Um, 
Now what I'm going to do, this, this is one graph. This is a fine graph. But if you want to compare this with another situation, and don't you want to do that? Aren't you trying to compare two different situations here? Wouldn't it be neat if I could put two lines on one graph? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose the data option from the menu here. And then here I'm going to select new data set. And look at that. I have, I have this window here. And I can scroll over to enter a new data set. Now it defaults as data set and then data set 2. Can you have two different well, it's going to be one graph, two lines on one graph. So I'm going to double click where it says data set. And this is going to be my, this was without the pectinase, right? Yeah. Just to keep everything straight. And I'm going to double click over here. And I'm going to write, this will be the with the pectinase. OK. And I'll just enter, I'll start entering time here. Um, we just forgot the zero. Yeah, OK. So I'm going to put in 0 and then 0, 20. And you have 4 at 20 seconds. Wow. At 40 seconds, you had 5 at 60 seconds, you had 6 milliliters. And 80 seconds, you had 7.5 milliliters. All right, and I, and I can keep going. Here's a point I would make. Um, do you see how the numbers are 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100? 0, 20, 40, 60, 80? Your numbers don't have to be exactly the same. They can be, but they don't have to be the same. But you saw me put in numbers. Did you see the line go? Is there a second line? No. So what you have to do is tell the computer to not only graph this first data set, you have to tell it to graph the second data set as well. So to do that, you need to go to um, either options, or you can double click on the graph to get the graph options window. And then you see how there's two tabs within the options window? You've got the graph options window, and you have the access options window. Axes, A-X-E-S, is the plural of the word axis. So you've got options for both axes here. And you'll see here in Y column, this, this Y axis column window, we've got a without pectinase, which is the name of the first data set that I did over here. And then there's another with pectinase. To open this up and tell the computer, hey, I want that graphed too, I got to change this plus to a minus. So I open it up. And then just select the Y data the volume data, is it, as is the case here. And do you notice that we're going to have two separate symbols? There's a circle and there's a triangle. And that'll help us differentiate the two lines. And once you hit done there, there it is. Now the two lines are there. A couple things you can do to make the graph look better. You can grab on the axis and click and drag. You can change the scale if you want to. Both y-axis and x-axis, you can just grab and drag if you want to. All right. Another thing you can do is you can double click near the axes and get the axes options. If you want to change the computer's scale, you can, you can manually change the scale. So I can go, let's say I want my top to be 15 milliliters and I want my bottom to be negative 5. I can do that if I want to and hit done. And see how it shows down here? Here's negative 5 and it went all the way up to 15. So graphical analysis is cool like that. Cool like that. You can change a lot of stuff. The other thing you're going to have to do is print this. So to print it, there's a couple things you need to do. Hit File and Print. And what will come up is a printing options window. I'm always going to want you to select this, to print a footer. A footer is something that's at the foot of the page. All right? And what you need to do is put the names of the group members in here so that I know whose graph is whose, because they're all going to look pretty similar. All right? Especially if you all name the title the exact same way. I put Harry, Ron, and Hermione in there just as an example of a, a group of people that could work together and get things done, right? Although Harry and Ron sort of rudely always let Her Hermione do all the work in many circumstances, don't they? Anyway, you'll hit OK. And what you need to do is make sure that wherever you are, make sure that the printer is, has the room number wherever you are. 
and I'll hit OK, and what will happen is this will print out. Before you do that, though, you might consider doing printing options, excuse me, not printing options, but print preview or page setup. Print preview will show you what it's going to look like. And I can actually print from here if I want to or go to the printing options window and put my name in there if I want to. And you see how Harry, Ron, and Hermione's name show up down here? OK, I'm going to cancel that for now. Um, I'm going to put in page setup. I'm going to, I'm going to choose a landscape for this and hit OK. And I'll show you how that'll look under print preview. That takes up more of the page. The graph will look bigger and better. You know what I mean? So that might be something you could consider. Another thing that you need to realize is that not all of your data in this table will show up when you print. What you can do is copy this data, highlight the data. I just dragged over the data and I highlighted it. I'm going to do copy, but I'm actually going to highlight all my data. I'm going to copy that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a program called Microsoft Excel. And Excel is a program that just helps you make tables and charts. And I'm going to right click and hit paste on that. And then here's my data. The titles, the column headings don't come with. So you've got to re-engineer the column headings. But if you want to print out the data completely, um, on a separate page, you can do this. Obviously, you need to enter in what this is. This is time in seconds. This is volume in milliliters. And if you need to adjust the column widths, you can just reach up there and grab that stuff. Um, you can work with Excel and make data tables if you need to. Okay. All right, so that's enough for now, ladies and gentlemen. Get to work.